Hi guys. <laughs> Literally nothing is funny. I'm just screaming for no reason because both of the kids are sleeping and I can finally film a video. <laughs> and my husband just went to sign up for the gym because he thinks he's getting fat. We don't even get enough sleep yet. So I'm like, why are you going to the gym when the baby's three weeks old? But he wants to get hot for me, so it's fine. Also, guys, I literally never buy Starbucks. But ever since I've given birth, I've been given Starbucks gift cards. This, this is a caramel brulee iced latte. And it's really good. Am I getting this again? Oh, yeah. So if you guys can tell, I've given birth. My baby is three weeks old now. And let me tell you if you're new here or you haven't watched my first labor and delivery story, I definitely would recommend you go and watch that because my two labor stories were basically like a 360 type of difference, okay? The first experience was absolutely traumatic. It was awful, miserable, any bad word you can think of. I had really bad postpartum depression and my entire labor, I basically just cried. It was awful, so if you guys want to hear all the details about that story, I will link it down below for you. The things we go through to have kids. This time, let's talk about this story, guys. Super different, so let's chat, shall we? So hey, I'm Sarah, guys, and I'm so happy that you're here, and I hope you decide to subscribe to this channel. I would really like that. Okay, happy new year. Let's all be nice to each other. And subscribe to Sarah Days. Thank you. I'm supposed to be uploading every Saturday, but I just had a baby and I just gave birth. And it's been honestly the hardest thing I've ever done in my life to have two kids. You feel like by the time you get with one kid, the other one needs something and they're both screaming at the same time. But you can only help one of them at the time. So then it's just constant screaming and crying and puking. And pooping on you guys. This kid has <laughs> pooped on us so many times. Literally to the point where I was screaming at 3 a.m. and had to get my husband out of bed because he was literally shooting rockets out of... Yeah, it was really bad, guys. Like, it literally ran, went from the changing table, landed on my shorts, and landed on the floor. Like, it was really crazy. I keep getting so distracted. I'm just rambling. I need to get it together. If you haven't watched a little gingerbread house making video, guys, it's honestly really cute. So, originally my doctor told me that my baby was going to be due December 1st of 2021. I was all excited. I was like, December 1st, that's such a cute date. That's awesome. I'm excited. Let's get it right. Then, they basically, one, they were doing one of my ultrasounds. They realized or thought that my due date was going to be changed to the 5th according to how the baby was measuring. I don't know. They didn't even tell me until literally, like, they were asking me when I'm due. And I told them December 1st. And they're like, no. This says you're due December 5th. So I was like, okay, never mind, bye. Of course, I have high hopes. And I'm like, I'm gonna do my labor induction exercises. Like, the baby's gonna come December 1st. I'm so excited. God bless, right? No. This man was sitting up in there cooking for literally an extra week, which I was expecting on the first, guys. He didn't come till the 12th of December. I don't know why, but I hate going to the doctors. <laughs> Let's just say that through this pregnancy, I probably went to the doctor about... 30 to 40 percent of how much i was supposed to go so i skipped like say like 60 percent of my appointments okay i just don't like going there especially now that i had a one-year-old i have to drag her with like her whole stroller and drag it all out with my huge belly and then like sit in this waiting room for literally an hour and then they take you to the back they like pee in this cup are you bleeding are you spotting are you crying are you whatever they ask you their dumb little questions they touch your belly basically poke around send you home so you're going to tell me that it takes me a three hours to get ready, an hour to sit in your waiting room, dragging my daughter. She's literally getting so tired and cranky and starts acting bad because she can't sit in the stupid stroller for an hour. And then you're going to stroll me to the back and literally see me for five minutes and send me home and tell me everything is normal every single time. So I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I think if something's wrong, I will know. Like with my first pregnancy when I had the gallbladder stones stuck i went to the doctor and you know what they told me you are just having morning sickness and i was like okay like you're lying and i tried to have them check me i tried to tell them no you're wrong they wouldn't listen to me until i went to the emergency room and ended up having endoscopic surgery my baby could have died so please don't tell me that i don't know my body because i know so anyways i skipped like all my appointments my last two 
weeks of pregnancy i was supposed to go like once each week i kind of didn't go to those either like it was just annoying because i was like kind of really miserable at that point because i was hoping the baby would already come by now i was trying to do my random exercises like i couldn't even sit sleep nothing comfortably i was just really miserable and i was like you know what i don't want to go to the doctor and sit there like i don't want to see anybody i don't want to talk to anybody like i literally want to just sit at home on my couch and be sad okay that's all i wanted to do my doctor got really concerned because i kept skipping all my appointments <laughs> So she called my mother, okay, and if that sounds like weird, she didn't like stalk her down or anything. My mom, like everybody probably in this entire clinic knows my mom. My mom is the loudest person ever. She will come in there and scream and preach and be glorious to everybody there and bring them random gifts when they don't even know her. But that's how my mom is, so they all know her. Also, the main doctor of that clinic delivered like, I don't know, at least six of her kids, I think, so, okay. He was also saying it's so crazy that he basically delivered my mom's kids and now he's delivering my kids. So she called my mom. She said, yo, where is your daughter? Is she still pregnant? I called the hospitals. They said she's not there. There was no baby. God bless. Where is Sarah? Is her baby still in the womb? And my mother was like, blah, 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 telling her my whole life story about how, oh, somebody crashed into my car. And so then I need to go and get it fixed. And it's also like the holidays and everything is just crazy. And everything is insane. So please forgive my precious daughter, Sarah, for skipping all your appointments. But she's still pregnant and miserable. So she was like, okay, if she wants, she could come in tomorrow morning. I come in at 9 a.m. She called my mom on Friday and then told me, told her I could come in Saturday the 11th because I was already like super overdue. And she was basically concerned, whatever. So I showed up. Because I was like at a point where I was like, I need to know if like I'm dilated or something because it's so annoying to me how at the end of pregnancy, everyone just keeps texting like every day, is there a baby? Is there a baby? How are you? How are you? Like, how do you think I'm doing? I'm still doing the same as yesterday. When you texted me yesterday, if I had the baby, you would either know or I wouldn't want you to know. And I'm spending time with my baby, so leave me alone. You're going to know when the baby's here because I'll post it eventually. I can't keep them secret for forever, right? So please calm down, please go to sleep and leave me alone because I can't sleep. So thank you. I'm sorry guys, It was I was really annoyed. And you know what else people ask you? Are you having contractions yet? Let me tell you guys that you don't know really if you're having contractions yet. Even if you had kids before, like for me, I had no idea if I was having contractions or not because by the end of pregnancy, your baby is so big, you're so uncomfortable, your entire body is in pain like every day. Your baby is literally kicking you in every organ that you own and you're experiencing pain almost all day every day. So I don't know if I'm having a contraction until they become consistent or really strong, okay? I don't know. I was like, I don't know. I'm I think I'm having them, but I'm not they're not consistent. I went to my doctor. She was surprised to see me. She was happy to see me. She was like, Why did you go missing? And I was like, Well, I didn't want to see you. So no, that's not really what happened. But we're we're actually really good friends. Me and my doctor. We're like super close. Like me and her talk all the time. We're literally friends. Like I have her number and we are friends. So leave me alone. I was like, yeah, I kind of just want you to check me, probably do a membrane sweep just to speed things along, whatever. She was already trying to schedule an induction for me because she was like, hello, this man is really taking his time up in there. So we need to schedule an induction because hello, he can't stay in there forever. So Christmas is coming. He needs to leave. I was like, I don't want to schedule an induction. I think I'm going to have the baby like literally within the next two days because I'm just like really feeling it. She checked my cervix and said that it was already three centimeters dilated. I was having contractions the rest of the day and then all night long. So here we go, Labor Day. Labor Day, guys. The entire day of the 11th, I went to the doctor at 9 a.m. I was having random contractions for the rest of the day. It was like, I don't remember how they went, honestly. I was trying to time them as much as I could, but they were kind of like randomly spaced, randomly strong, randomly not that strong random everything so i was just kind of going about my day and this time guys i decided in my mind that i'm just going to be positive i am going to be strong i know this is normal now like I, my body knows what it's doing i've done this before at this point i was like you know what? i'm gonna be so positive and so happy like i'm just so excited what i was doing is 
kind of going about my life like when the contractions would come i would just like breathe and then when they were gone i would basically go about normal life and laugh and joke with jerome and watch videos and whatever we were doing i don't remember so when night came around jerome just kept asking me like let me know when you want to go to the hospital blah 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 like i was having the contractions but i was like i am not i do not want to go to the hospital until i am 1000 percent sure that i will be admitted i'm in labor i'm having this baby before i leave i wanted to be super sure because i knew that i would have to bring eliana to my parents house possibly like wake everybody up if it was in the night time and it would just be like a lot you know so i was like i'm not about to do that so i'm gonna wait for them to be consistent for my water to break or blah 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 well none of those things ever happened <laughs> but let me tell you that i labored all night um i let eliana and my husband sleep i tried to sleep it didn't really happen because I was having contractions, of course, and they were getting like increasingly painful, like to the point where I left the room um, and I came and stayed on the couch and I was just trying different positions, trying to use my birthing ball. Like what I was doing was actually watching labor and delivery, like um, nurses and stuff on YouTube and random like doulas and stuff who just post videos about how to breathe through contractions. Best positions for contracting whatever like all those random videos and some of them are like really interesting and some of the ladies are like just funny and cute so like i was just having fun like literally just when the one video is done i click on the next one that's there just like to keep myself preoccupied i was trying to switch up positions trying to take like little walks making sure to drink tons of water i did so much research guys this time and i was just like i'm gonna have this down and just everything is gonna be great and i was kind of right so at around 5 a.m. is when my contractions got like super painful like to the point where like I could barely breathe through them anymore so, like it felt like excruciating pain like I couldn't handle them to be any worse that's kind of how I felt I don't really know how to describe it I was still just breathing through them I'm like okay like I just have to get through this contraction I just have to get through this one and then like you just have to think that about every single one and then eventually like they will be the last one and you'll be good to go. But I tried to still wait because I was like, I want them to be consistent. And they say 5-1-1 rule, right? So I was like, I'm waiting. Like, I'm waiting for them to be consistent. And let me tell you guys, my contractions were not consistent at all through this entire labor. Not once were they coming at an exactly same interval. Like, never. Like, some, like even when I was like 9 centimeters dilated, like, they were just random. They never regulated. So listen to your body. If you think it's time to go into the hospital, go. My water never broke with either of my kids. They had to burst the water right before I pushed, basically. Everybody's different, so just listen to yourself, kind of, because you know. So at 7 a.m., we hurried up. I was like, honey, like, hurry. Like, I literally think, like, I waited maybe even too long now. Like, I was getting all nervous, and I was like, I'm literally scared because we still have to drive all the way to my mom's house to drop off Eliana and then drive all the way in the other direction back again to go to the hospital and it's like a 20 minute drive each way. So we went. I don't know if anybody knows guys but when you have contractions and you're in the car it's kind of the worst thing ever. When you're having a contraction the one thing you don't want like when they get really really painful the one thing you don't want is to be touched or moving at all like you want to literally like I would like hold myself kind of off the chair like up a little and you just breathe and do not move like an inch because if you move like even in the slightest bit it hurts so much because the baby's head is like right there guys so if you're like bouncing or moving or something or somebody even pushes you touches you pokes you it literally is like i don't know how to explain it guys it's just it's not cute it's painful and no maybe in your early contractions you can have like somebody press on your back or somebody like whatever when you're like in a active labor you're literally like do not touch me please please don't touch me stay right six feet away where you should be according to the cdc am i right anyways we went to my mom's dropped off eliana blah 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 then we drove to the hospital and i was still like doing good like i was literally talking to my husband the entire time like between contractions men don't understand what we need so we kind of have to tell them because he will still try to be asking me questions while i'm having a contraction like oh look at that car my eyes are closed i cannot open them i am in pain i can barely breathe my downtown is opening up to literally birth your child and you need to be quiet right now 
because I'm busy. So like in between every contraction, I was literally just giving him a bunch of advice. Like you cannot switch lanes when I'm in a contraction. You have to just like step off the gas and kind of just like let the car roll and just like give me my minute. You know what I mean? Like stay in the slow lane, I don't care. And then like in between contractions, you can hurry up and try to get there faster. But like when I'm having one, literally stop. Just like try to make it seem like the car is not moving. That's what I was trying to tell him. We were just talking and laughing and having fun basically the entire time. So then when we showed up to the hospital, I don't remember what time it was. I think it was like maybe like nine by the time we either got there or got a room. When we showed up, I was like kind of talking to the nurses. They were like looking at me like I'm so chill. They're like, this lady is probably think she's in labor. They were like asking me like, is this your first? Because I was just like peaceful and chill and I was like, yeah, girl, like your necklace is cute, you know? Saying jokes. I also had this huge addiction to ice at the end of my pregnancy, but I was like literally eating a tray of ice every single day. So when I reached the hospital, I just wanted ice. I'm the kind of person who, if I'm eating ice cream and I get cold, I don't stop eating the ice cream. I just put a sweater on. So I was telling Jerome like a joke, like I need to get sweaters for my... <laughs> I need to get sweaters for my teeth because I wanted to keep eating the ice. It's so stupid, guys. But I was, like, literally seeing the dumbest junk and, like, just laughing on the whole hospital. Like, I don't even know. The stuff I was saying was so dumb. So, <clears throat> and then they go to check me. And this woman's like, oh, wow, you're, like, at a solid six or seven. And I'm like, what? Like, because <laughs> I remember, like, with Eliana, I was, like, in labor for so long. For, like, over a day. And they literally told me I was, like, at two or three centimeters and basically to go home so i remember being super upset this is the doctor who delivered my babies both of them basically he came and like to see me and we were just kind of talking he was like in a really good mood this time because last time he was in a horrible mood and i was like this dude is so annoying like he's being so rude and annoying he wouldn't let me get the epidural and all this random stuff i just remember i was so mad at him but this time he was like so nice he was like friendly he was like in a good mood like hey what's up girl like whatever he was like okay so i don't believe the nurse <laughs> Because she said you're a six or seven and I think I need to check you for myself because you look a little too happy and comfortable So this man checked me. He said, oh girl, you're an eight already. Like I'm like, okay, like Let's get this party started, right? So he took me up to the room and then they started asking me if I want epidural I didn't know what to do Because I knew that my contractions were super painful and then they started telling me like you gotta like remember that they're just basically gonna get closer and worse and whatever and then i started like thinking about like the pushing part and i got like super nervous and i don't know guys like i literally thought about it so long basically i decided to just get it because i was like i'm having like a pretty good labor experience and i don't want it to just all go bad at the end and then like everything is ruined and i feel horrible and miserable and traumatic and whatever so i was like you know what let's just do it and maybe my entire labor experience will just be positive and happy, which like is kind of how I see it right now. So I think it was the right decision. I'm not going to lie. The epidural was actually the worst part though of my labor. The epidural is basically a blind procedure. So these men were poking around my spine for literally the longest time ever. You're also having contractions, but you cannot move. You're having contractions, but you can't move. And they have you like hunched over like with your arms up. They have like this huge thing you like hunch over and like your spine is like needs to be like around so they could poke and see and whatever. Basically, they poke around in all these random spots in your spine trying to find the right little spot, right? So like the random will like poking you somewhere and you're like getting some shooting pain down your butt. <laughs> they poke you like somewhere else and you're getting like some really bad pain in like your one side of your back. And like, it's like really random guys like, and it's actually kind of really creepy. Okay, so when they just keep doing it, it just like starts giving you like chills and like you're like, ugh, you're just like, I don't know. It's just like, no, like stop touching me. So I literally started crying guys because it was taking so long and it seems like he was having one of the new guys try doing the epidural and he was just causing me so much pain because he kept hitting the wrong spot and it like kept hurting my one side of my spine so bad guys. Like I'm literally getting chills thinking about it. It was so painful and he would not stop and I kept telling him like it's hurting in my right side because he's supposed to know and like go the other way. But no, like it was just so annoying and I was like how long is this going to take and they're basically like we don't know, we can't tell you because it's a blind procedure so we just have to feel around and when we find the spot basically then you'll be good. So I was like so miserable and I was like oh my gosh how long is this going to take like they can't even give me a time frame I'm probably going to be here all day. So that was so hard. Let me get the baby. Here's little Ezekiel. He literally loves to cuddle. Um, let me also mention that 
I didn't know this was a thing because they never even told me this was a thing. But they basically hit somewhere on my spine that causes you like postpartum headaches. And like they didn't really make it sound like it was going to be bad or anything. They just said, you're going to have a little bit of a headache tomorrow. And like literally the headache la couldn't last up to 10 days. And like they didn't even say that. I thought it was going to be like a one day headache. And the headache was extremely bad, guys. I was crying from the headache pain for like multiple days after birth. It was really, really bad. Nothing was helping. I've tried ibuprofen, Tylenol. The only thing that kind of helped was Advil. And the thing that helped the most was actually coffee. It sucked. That's what I can tell you guys. It was really bad. It was worse than I imagined. It's called a post-dural headache. And it's it was really, really bad. Like to the point where I actually threw up. And let me tell you guys, I did not throw up a single time with the entire pregnancy that I was pregnant with him. Not even during my morning sickness phase. I never once actually threw up. So that's kind of telling you something. That I threw up from the headaches. It was really rough. So like the guys who were doing the epidural were actually super, super nice. I just couldn't keep bearing the pain of that epidural. Like I tried to be strong at first. Like I was good. But then it's like when they started doing it and it was taking so long. And they couldn't even tell me when they were going to be done. And they were kind of like, yeah, we have to basically just keep poking around. And hope we find it. Then I was like, okay, you know what? I can't do this. Like, this is so bad. And then I was like, kind of like even asking them if we could just stop and not get it anymore. But then I was like, I already came this far. Maybe they're about to get it. So I basically told them they could try one more time. And then I think they had like the guy who's really good at it do it. And then he did it like really good. Like the placement was perfect and everything. Because like right away, I felt super like peaceful and nice. And I kind of felt like I was on a cloud. <laughs> That's the best I can describe it. The problem with the epidural was after I got it, my contractions stalled. So I was stuck at nine centimeters for three hours, okay? So the epidural, I guess, got me too comfortable. At that point, they decided they are going to give me a dose of Pitocin. Pitocin sucks. I feel so bad for people who have to get news, guys. I cannot. Oh my goodness, Pitocin is horrible, guys. It literally felt like my insides were on fire i was literally like almost like screaming guys it was so horrible i was on epidural and i felt it that bad okay so let me just tell you guys it's not cute pitocin is evil okay let's not do that ever again i was like basically screaming so the nurse came in my room and basically stayed there the whole time and she's like randomly asking me questions or like tell me to breathe and blah 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 so then i was like can i push now because like i couldn't just like sit there and bear the pain because i literally told you it felt like my insides were on fire it was super bad like it was really painful i was like mm, like okay let's not demonstrate but like and i was like i hate pitocin please take this thing out of me can we stop so and then she's like no like just let me know when you feel like you need to push literally 20 minutes later i was already basically pushing i started yelling at them and yelling at the doctor and i was like i'm pushing i cannot bear Pain. get in here i'm pushing this baby out like right now like, i was not kidding i was super serious guys because with my first these doctors made me wait and wouldn't let me push and i was basically sitting there open for almost two hours and they wouldn't let me give birth because they claimed that it was not safe or some crap okay and it was the worst most traumatic horrible thing ever okay so let's just note that please so this time I was like, I'm not playing around. Like I said, I'm pushing and that's what I mean. So get in here. And if you don't get the doctor in here right now, you nurse are going to deliver the child. How about that? She's like, okay, he's coming. He's coming. So like literally they came. And then I was like, I'm not kidding. Like I'm pushing. And I think they were just shocked at how fast it was. Because like I said, I was just sitting there for three hours at like nine. And then like 20 minutes after they gave me Pitocin, I'm like already screaming, like get in here. You know what I mean? Pushing hurt was pretty bad this time. It would like hurt. I feel like worse than last time. I'm the kind of pusher who I don't like, oh, take it easy and slow and gentle and whatever. And like silly push me. But like I literally push as hard as I can. And I don't care what happens like to me like in that moment. You know what I mean? I just want to get the baby out because I know some people push for like an hour. I don't know how guys. I really cannot understand that because both of my babies were out in three contractions. So like literally five minutes. And he was eight pounds and 13 ounces. So he was a big one. He was a big boy. I gave birth guys. It was just super emotional. Obviously like when he was here I was just like so happy. Like I literally was just crying. Like I was so happy it's over. Like that I'm just not pregnant. Like that he's here. That everything is fine you know what i mean like and it's just super emotional honestly 
I was gonna have a doula. She ended up being out of town on the one day that I was giving birth. And she came back that night and whatever. I didn't really need her because look at me go now. I was literally great. Yeah, we've been having fun, but like it's really exhausting to have two kids. I'm not gonna lie. And it's not like you could just be like, oh, it's fine. I'll just go to bed and get a good night's sleep. No, girl. Because you're up every two hours feeding this one. So anyways, he's here now and we're all good. And I'm feeling really good, guys, like, for the most part, you know, like, if I overdo it or I just start getting too tired or doing too much, I kind of start getting a little miserable or moody or, like, emotional and getting, like, extra bleeding or something. So I'm just trying to take it easy, even though it's kind of impossible. Like, I have to literally try to remember to just do anything for myself. Like, I was realizing that so many days I don't even remember to eat guys like it would literally be like 5 p.m. And I'll be like, oh my goodness. I just realized I did not eat all day long It's like you literally don't even get like more than like 30 minutes of basically quiet time Here's a little pumpkin. I think he's pretty cute. He also just seems so like strong and Look at him smiling. Are you guys see this? Oh my gosh, he's smiling He's a pretty good boy, though. <laughs> Guys, babies are so funny. Eliana loves him, honestly. It's so cute. Like, she gets excited to see him every single day. She tries to give him his pass first. She tries to swing him. You don't realize how smart kids are, but they literally catch on to every single thing that you're doing. She literally watched me pump twice, and I saw her trying to put the pump on her own self. Like, she was literally trying to pump herself, guys. We have a daughter and a son now, so we just feel complete. We feel happy and thankful, honestly. I mean, like, me and Jerome basically take turns watching the kids and sleeping. That's basically what we've been doing. I'll try to watch the kids and let him sleep, and then, like, today, like, even this morning, like, he let me sleep in, and he, like, took care of the kids. He basically cleaned my whole house, too. Like, I wasn't expecting that. We basically take turns cooking. <sighs> I'm honestly tired guys. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't know when I'm gonna find the time to even edit this video I'm just like tired. It's so hard to find basic time like today I literally had to be like drone Could you please just like stay with the kids so I could just shower? Like literally that's all I need right now is just to go and have time to shower and go get a Starbucks Like that's literally how it is. I need to really take a self-care day So if you would like to come and sponsor my self-care day, let me know. I'm just kidding guys, but yeah, I definitely want to do that. I just need to find the time, of course. Have a wonderful day, guys. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful new year. You know that you can do anything you set your mind to. I truly believe that the biggest difference and basically the only difference between my two labor stories was my mindset. Because the first time around, I was just super miserable, negative, depressed, just everything. And this time, I decided that I'm not going to let my body control me. I'm going to use my mind to control my body so make sure you take care of yourself guys set some goals for yourself don't just sag around you need to find a passion find something you love to do do something good for yourself you matter you really do okay no toxic people this new year guys say no when you need to say no and just know that if you feel like you don't want somebody in your life or they don't bring you joy or they're constantly bringing you down or Honestly, anyone, even if they're family members, guys, you do not owe it to anybody. You don't owe your time to anybody. You don't owe your energy to anybody, okay? Because you will never get that stuff back. You will never get your time back, so don't spend it on somebody that you don't care about or doesn't care about you, okay? This year, we are going to focus on ourselves. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys like this video. I'm sorry if I was randomly rambling. My mind is honestly all over the place, and so is my house. <laughs> Pray for me. Literally, look at his little legs. Like, they're so cute. And he's so tired. We love you guys so much. See you next video. Bye.